All right, we're going to, uh, oh, <clears throat> hang on one second, folks. Boy, that changed quickly, huh? Give me one second here, everybody. We're just going to uh, do a little pixeling today because there are some Pixel phones on sale at Amazon. And I got to just adjust something real quick here. Put the right product in the right thing. And then we will pick it up. So bear with me for one second here, folks. And we'll get going. So uh, yeah, so there's um, <clears throat> some Pixel phones on sale. Actually, the Pixel 6a is on sale. And I think a few of the other ones are too, but for some reason, Amazon is not letting me add them to my product thing here. So give me a second, let me get the right one popped in so I can get the Amazon thing going. There we go. So now we've got items on, as they call it being on deal. So we will kick this off once my thing goes live here. There we go. Yeah, so, you know, I got this in a while ago, and I never got around to testing it. So I thought we would go through all of this stuff. And if you are just tuning in, and I'll probably put this in my uh, live chat also, um, these came in free of charge from Google a little while back. So we've got the Pixel Watch. I got the Pixel 7 Pro here. And I got a couple of Anchor things that are on sale, including their 747 power supply, <laughs> which has actually been really helpful um, in some of my charging activities. Uh, give me one second here. Um, there we go. Okay, so let me kick things off here. So, and oh, I got to get my other chat going. Ah. Everybody's popping in. So we got Gagnarok. Hello there. Romeric is here. CM is here. Kevin Hawthorne is here from Lakeland, Florida. Good to see all the regulars. Reese Edwards. Tristan Leonard is here. James Radolph is just tuning in. How did I know? I know, I know all. The algorithms are connected to my brain. So yeah, so, you know, we got this stuff in. So we did review, um, this is the Pixel um, 6 or 6a. So we did a review of this one, which you can find um, on Amazon, but also on my YouTube channel. But we also got in the 7 Pro and the watch. And I never actually got around to playing with the 7 Pro and the watch. So what I thought I would do today is kind of test these things out a little bit and see how they all work, because I really have not delved into this at all. And I was waiting a little bit on the watch, primarily because I had heard that there were issues with it related to battery life. So I wanted to let it, let it update and get kind of figured out there. So the watch here, it, they sent me one with a white band, as you can see, and they have another band in here. I'm assuming that's for a, a larger wrist. So I don't think I have that problem. <laughs> I'm not known for my muscular wrists, but we'll see how this fits. And I'll probably put it on my right wrist here just because I have my Apple Watch on the other one. Yeah, I'm debating whether or not I should do the review with the, the Pixel Watch on, but I'll probably wear it for you know a couple days and see how it, how it does. Keith Weston is here. And um, who else is here? Oh, David Langley is here. Evening in the UK. Yeah, it's late, a late afternoon, 3.45 or so here. Well, mid-afternoon, I guess, in the US. And it's rainy where we are. Yes, I was going to clean up my office today, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to stream again. Why not? And I'm sure the weather is beautiful down in Lakeland, Florida. You know what's funny is how hard it is for me to put this watch on <laughs> on my left hand here. But I, need, I do need to charge it. So another thing that's on sale today, by the way, is this thing. This is the, um, the Powerhouse 100. And you know what? I, I put this in my, my latest review that I just did. It has an AC outlet on it. 
and let me see if I can find something to plug in because it will it will run anything up to 100 watts. So as long as what you're plugging in does not consume 100 watts, it'll it'll handle it. And I had a lamp somewhere around here. I don't know what happened to it. Um, in fact, I can find something to plug in to show you what it does. Um, where did that lamp go? I had a, I had a lamp. My wife, my wife has been going around and like throwing things out. So I think she may have got my lamp <laughs> as part of the, uh, the purging that she's doing. But you can plug anything into it. So let me go grab, I know what I'll grab. I'll grab a couple of LED holiday lights out of my back room here. We have to take these things out anyhow because we were going to do some holiday decorating today, but it's raining, which I guess is better than snow. They were thinking it might have might snow here, but we didn't get the snow. Hmm. All right, I can't find that very easily here either. Let me find something to plug in just to show you how this works. So during my stream the other day, we plugged in a camera. But it's just got to be under 100 watts, and it'll handle it. Let's see. This is USB power, so it's not going to be that interesting. Where did that lamp go? Ah, here it is. So watch. So I've got an LED light in this lamp, OK? So this is like your standard. This one's kind of sad, but this is your standard, your standard lamp here. So um, let me give you me. OK, so here's, here's a lamp. Just like your regular, your regular old plug. Now I've got like a smart bulb in here. This is a Roku smart bulb we'll be getting to later. But if I take out the battery, this thing's charged for the most part. And if I plug it in, hopefully, nothing bad will come of me. All right, so I plugged it in, right? Oh, I got to turn it on first. Hang on, let's do that. So you got to turn on the battery. So now it's on. And there it goes. Look at that from a battery. It's magic. So this will run um, about 87 watt hours. And I think this light bulb is like seven or eight when it's on full blast. So <laughs> I know this is kind of weird. Like, what is he doing? But this is all coming off the battery. So let's see. Let's take a look at, and I'll answer some more questions in a minute. If you have questions on Amazon, definitely ask them. So let's say it's 87 divided by 8. So theoretically, this light bulb should be able to go for about 9 or 10 hours off of the battery, because it only draws like 7 or 8 watts. And if it drew 1 watt, it would go for 87 hours. Whoa, Logic KGR, thank you very much for your super chat. That is greatly appreciated, like a lot. You didn't have to do that, but I do appreciate it greatly. Thank you very much for that. Mainly because maybe you were hoping I would electrocute myself with this, right? <laughs> it's always fun when we plug things in and we don't know what's going to happen. But thank you very much for that. Mohammed Meyer, thank you for the kind words. And Greg has had the, the Pixel Watch from day one, never had an issue with the battery. Um, charges from single digits to full in about an hour. Hmm, not bad. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how it works. We might, maybe we'll plug it into this battery and see if it can handle both things, right? Let's try that. So here's the, this is probably the, the, not the safest way to do this. But here, here is uh, the Pixel Watch charger. I'm going to plug it into the battery here. And now with the light bulb still going, um, we will. Plug the watch in, and let's see. Yep, it's charging, so it's able to get, whoa, to get both going here at the same time. Yep. Um, so the watch is charging, and what I could also do is plug one of the phones in. So it only has a single USB Type C port on here, and I was curious to see if the watch, yeah, it doesn't have a USB adapter in here. I'm just going through the packaging. Um, but it is charging that. And then I could also plug the Pixel 7 phone in at the same time. And this will charge, if I use the USB plug, it'll charge a bit slower. But you kind of get the ideas to how this works. So 
what's nice about this battery, and I'll pull it up on the uh, Amazon on the Amazon thing right now. What I what I the reason I bought this battery is because when I'm out in the field, I have things that don't charge over USB. They require an outlet like my Canon camera, so I can plug pretty much anything that I travel with into this, and it will will charge up. And I can unplug it, and you know, it works like a, it's like almost like having a little generator, and it's not all that heavy, so it you know in, in my production bag, it's not like a huge additional item to carry around, and I could plug my camera in with its AC adapter and just charge it. Now, if it goes over 100 watts, you're, you're out of luck. And then it has a, a flashlight on there, too. Let's see if I can get it to you know, hold it down, maybe. Press and hold for AC. I forgot how to turn the light on. So press and hold this for AC. I'll have to figure that out, but you get the idea. And the other thing that I bought recently, this is not on sale. I thought it was. This is the Anchor 747. And this thing runs at, a, at 150 watts. Thank you for the follow, Nebula Kitty and Robert W. Pickett, for following. Yeah, we're going to get the uh, Pixel going here in a minute. So I got the Pixel 7 Pro. And I may have to charge it here. Let's see if it comes up. And Matt K is here. Yeah, I'm just getting myself organized. Another Lakeland, Florida visitor here. Um, what is the best hub for dual Mac PC to screen set up? Hello from Palestine. So I like the Kensington ones. Um, in disclosure, they did sponsor the channel, but they've got a good selection of stuff. If you're looking at a, um, a Thunderbolt 3 Mac, the one that I like is the 5700 from Kensington. I, did a rev I think I did a video of it. Um, what I like about it is that it has like a Thunderbolt hub on board. So it will give you, when you plug one cable in, you get power in and you get three um, Thunderbolt ports going out. And that is a really neat solution because you can plug displays in. You can basically plug in whatever you need to plug in at the time. So for mine, it's the 5700. Let me look it up real quick. Um, it's never on sale because it is... Just doesn't, never goes on sale. The SD 5700T from Kensington. That's the one I have on my desk. So it delivers 90 watts of power delivery, which is enough for any of the Macs. And you've got three Thunderbolts going out, but you also get a few other ports, like a few USB ports and that sort of thing. Um, not on sale today. At least I don't think it is, although it is listed at 20% off right now, but it's not a Black Friday deal. Um, but again, the Kensington SD 5700T. And so on my desk, I have two of those Thunderbolt ports going out to a display. And then the third one is for my, my multi-gig Ethernet. So I got a 10-gig Ethernet plus two 4K displays going out on it. So um, that's it. Uh, let me take a few more questions here. And I cannot pronounce your name, unfortunately, but thank you for tuning in. If you give me the English pronunciation, I will be happy to, uh, to say your name. Tristan is here. Mohammed, hello again. And light bulbs can be powered from AC or DC power. Yeah, so that is an AC, it's a regular AC outlet on here. That's what it gives you. And it's a, I haven't found the end of this. I, I charged this once before my Florida trip, and I was actually running my GoPro's charger on it for a while, too. So I still have most of the, the charge here, as you can see. So it's been working pretty well. Yeah, the lampshade, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what happened to that lampshade. <laughs> um, oh, so updates on my brother's Starlink service. Yeah, so um, it's been working fine. He did have an issue, though. His house got hit by lightning, no fire or anything, but it did take out the, um, the, the router thing, um, you know, the, uh, the PoE adapter. So I shipped him mine, which worked. So he, sent, he got me a new one. So he was down for about a day or two. They did respond pretty quickly with replacement hardware, so it wasn't an awful period of downtime for him, but definitely something to think about, because like, if your equipment goes, you've got to wait for them to ship something to you. 
Does that flashlight turn itself off after a few minutes? It might. I don't even know how to turn it on. I'll have to read the instructions again. I forgot what, I forgot what turns on the flashlight. It needs a double tap. Let's see. Triple tap. I'm not sure. Oh, there's a button on the front. That's what it is. There we go. <laughs> so I think it stays on until you turn it off. So that's the... Oh, it's got a couple of different brightness levels. It's got a blinker. So it's right up here. It's hard to say in my studio lights here, but I would guess it's about the same brightness as like a smartphone light, but it's a little bit bigger. So you got that built in too. Pretty handy. All right, so let's take a look at the Pixel 7 Pro here while my watch is charging. And I'll just plug it into the other anchor thing here. Let that continue to charge up. Now, I did set this up initially. Um, by the way, this is the, if you're curious about the 6A, this is the 6A. And, you know, it's, it's funny. They're, they're pretty close in display quality. I actually like the 6A because it is much smaller. It's a much smaller phone. Hang on one second. Let me get my Amazon thing organized here. Oops, so we're going to do the 6, so this is the 6A. And the only issue I have with it right now is my, my thumbs are all, I have like dry skin from the winter, so my fingerprint reader is not, <laughs> it's not registering on here. None of these use uh, facial recognition, but it's a good phone. I'm pretty happy with it. Here, I'll, show, I'll load up the, uh, the wildlife benchmark on it so you can just see something running on it. And this has the, uh, the Google Tensor chip, and it has basically the same chip as the um, 6 Pro did. So you've got a pretty good little processor in here. So this is the 6A we're looking at right now. Yeah, I'm not a juggler. If I was juggling, it wasn't on purpose. Yeah, hey, Mohammed, uh, I just, <laughs> hey, don't worry about it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, that was really cool, wasn't it? So if you go on my, um, my Twitter, I've got more that I'll put, I'll put on, um, I'll post somewhere, I'll put on the blog. Um, it did a bunch of others that look really cool too. Yeah, it was this AI thing where you upload your portrait and it gives you like a whole bunch of different, different pictures and stuff. Like it makes, it, it's like an AI art generator thing. So it's pretty, it's pretty neat. All right, so this is the 6A running the wildlife uh, benchmark test. But it's a, it's a good phone. I, I, I think if you're not looking to spend a lot of money, it, um, it, you know, it does the job. And I like the form factor. It doesn't have wireless charging or anything like that, but it does everything else. And this today on Amazon is like 300 bucks, which is normally it's 450. So this is a good price for this phone. And I would say if you have like a Pixel 3a and are looking to upgrade, this one's, this one's a, good, a good upgrade path. Um, it's got two cameras. I think it's a wide angle and a, and a regular one. And the Pro has the, the telephoto. Yeah, let me take a look and see what that one will do on the light. I'll, maybe I'll just turn it on and let it run for a few minutes. I have, to, I have to charge it up soon anyhow. So that is the 6A. Now this is the 6 Pro. And we'll pop into this one real quick. Um, I haven't done the, uh, the gaming one yet. I was going to, and then the, the, the two games I was going to show fell off of the Amazon deal. So I couldn't do it during the Black Friday, Cyber Monday deal. So we'll, we'll come back to those at a later time. Um, the watch has to charge up a little bit more, so we'll let that charge for just a little bit longer. Now, what I do need to check on this phone is whether or not I have the latest update on it. Because this was like a, this was shipped before they were released. But I generally, with the, with the higher end phones, I tend to wait a little bit because everybody reviews these things right out of the gate. And I am often 
not going to get a lot of traffic on that. So I usually wait until they get a few updates down. And you know what's been interesting is that the, the Pixel phones in particular have often, I almost felt like they, they lacked identity for a while. You know, every, every, every year's Pixel phone was dramatically different than the prior year. Um, last year's 6 Pro was okay, but it, it wasn't, it didn't feel like a great phone to me. This one feels a lot better, and they stuck with like a design language, right? Like it looks similar to the 6 Pro, um, but they, they rectified some of the little gotchas that bugged me. But they're still not as good video-wise as the iPhone is. I think the iPhone is still the best video camera. But this phone's great. I really like the uh, 6A. All right, let this update go through. And we'll see how this thing performs. So I'll leave that benchmark up just to, just to take a look at it. I think I ran the wildlife on, on it before. You know what we'll do while that update is coming down is I will pair this up with the Pro here. So let's go to Google Play. And we'll install the Pixel Watch app. All right, so that's the setup process, <laughs> in case you're wondering. And I'll put them next to each other so you can see what's going on here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and set this up. And I have never used this Pixel Watch before, so we're, we're kind of going in blind here. Frank Crummer is here. I think I saw an insane price on the 6A. Yeah, it's, it's come down a lot. I think that's a good price on that phone. So I have not tested the Samsung Exynos, but it's Google's own custom arm silicon. It's not as zippy as the iPhone is, um, but it is in that ballpark. All right, so I got to sign into my Google account here real quick, so let me do that briefly. Okay, signing in, this could take about a minute. And let's see what happens here. So it's a good processor. I think it's, it's kind of optimized for the things that Google wants to do as far as AI is concerned, right? And uh, Jim, James is joining us on the Amazon feed, so you can see the links. Yeah, the links are um, in the description there. And here's a good example. So Poorly Buffalo went from a 3A to a 6A, really likes it. I had the fingerprint scanner issue when decorating my place and washed my hands constantly. Yeah, I think, you know, it's funny. I, I was not a big fan initially of Apple's switch to face recognition only. Um, it became more challenging when I had masks on walking around everywhere. Um, but I got I to put the watch on now. But I found that my hands in the winter get messed up Big time. I have kids. I'm constantly washing my hands. All right, so we're gonna. It's giving me a whole rundown here. I'm actually gonna take my Apple Watch off, and we'll set it aside here for a minute. Frank says it may not be zippy, but it is 300 bucks. Yeah, and actually, it, for for the price, I think it's it delivers an excellent level of performance. I will say, if you're an iPhone fan, um, the uh, the iPhone SE is a really good value on the iPhone side. All right, so slide the band through the outer loop. So I got to go through the, okay, that one. All right, so I have to go through the outer loop, and then I do that, and then I guess I slide it in here. I'm assuming that's how it goes on. Okay, so now it says continue on the phone. It feels a little tight. I got to maybe loosen it up a little bit. All right, continue on phone. So I'm going to continue on phone. Next. Which wrist is it on left? The crown is on the right. Learn how to switch bands, so it's going to go through a little thing here on how to switch the bands around. And now it wants me to install a second app. So I installed the Pixel app, and now it wants me to install the Fitbit app. I can talk to my watch. Let's set that up. And 
<laughs> and must be transferring some data over. Yeah, I'm curious to see. I, I use my Apple Watch a lot. So we'll see how it goes. Um, will that phone work in the AR glasses? I, are they still doing that? I have a Google Cardboard somewhere. I don't know if they're still, I think they got rid of that whole VR project they were doing. I don't like this partner thing, but okay. So access your assistant with a, hey, you know what? If you agree, Google Assistant will stand by to detect when this watch is fully awake. All right. Activate voice match, which I should have already. All right. We're almost done. A few more steps. So I'm going to set a pin on my watch. Bear with me. So I'm doing the pin on the watch. So this is very similar to the iPhone experience that you set a pin on the watch. And I could also do Google Wallet. And I'm not going to do that right now, but I, I may set that up later because one of the things that I love doing with my Apple Watch is when I go on the subway in New York City, I basically type in where I want to go on my phone, and then it tells me what trains to get on, when to transfer, and then I can pay with my watch. I just hit the, you know, I ding the, um, the thing, the, uh, the turnstile, and I, can, I just pay my fare right there. You can't do like the multi-ride deal, but generally if I go into New York City, it's, an, it's like one day, right? So I never, you know, it's 250 or 275 a, a, a per subway trip. A lot less expensive than Ubering everywhere. Okay, so they are recommending some different apps here. And I'm curious, so they, they recommend cardiogram heart rate monitor, but I would assume it's got that built in already. And there's a bunch of stuff that I don't have installed, but these are just recommendations. I'm going to skip all of that, but I will install I'm going to get rid of Calm. Um, Google Keep, oh, it, might be, it might be interesting. All right, set up complete. And see top features. All right, so the watch is restarting. Oh, AR glasses. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. no. So, um, this won't because I don't believe the Pixel phones support video output. It's not, I don't think it's on the list of, um, of phones that are supported. All right, so let's take a tour of, let's hit the, I think the watch is still restarting. I may have to charge the watch a little bit more because it was not fully charged when I started playing with it. You can take calls on it. This has uh, LTE as part of its thing, too. All right, done. Okay, setup is complete. So I have, I used to have a Fitbit account, so I should try to connect to that. All right, let's wait and see what we get here. In the meantime, I may loosen this up a little bit. I'm going to go down one, one rung. So what, what happens here is that because this tucks under, what you think might be the right fit is too tight. So even, even right now, it's a little too tight. So I'm going to go down one more, one more rung here, like the third rung. But it, it's, an, it's an attractive watch. I think it looks good. I like the round face on it. And you know what's nice is that a lot of the Android smartwatches were too, because I, I am not a big wristed man here. Um, so a lot of the Android watches were too big for me before. This one feels a lot closer in size to my Apple Watch. And to some degree, it actually makes the Apple Watch look a little dated. So here's my, here's my Apple Watch by comparison. Oops. So, and the Apple Watch has largely been with this square design forever, right? This has got a nice rounded... I think it looks pretty good. The band is not my choice of band. This is what they sent me, but. Does the Anchor GAN charger have a built-in battery? No, this doesn't. So this is strictly just a power supply. 
but it delivers a good amount of power. So you can power your laptop. So for example, my MacBook Pro will go at the full, you know, 100 watts or whatever, or 87 or whatever it uses. Okay, so we are, I'm not gonna turn battery savings on yet. Okay, so here we are. Hi there, would you like to learn how to use your new watch? I sure would. Let's start with swipes. If you all can see that. Swipe up for notifications, all right. Access notifications from the watch face. Swipe down for quick settings. And swipe to the left edge to go back. Let's learn about tiles. Tiles are accessed from the watch face and show helpful info for your apps. Swipe to the left or right to cycle through your titles. Oh, I see tiles. That's weather. Is your access in the watch face? Okay. Press the crown to go back to go back to the watch face. Okay. You can return to the watch face at any time. From the watch face, press the crown for for apps. Okay. These are the apps. Okay. Press the side button to see your recently used apps. Ha. Huh. Okay. All set. Sure. To switch to your last used app, double press the side button. To talk to your assistant, press and hold the side button. So one thing I like about the Apple Watch is that I can just hold it up. I don't even have to say, hey, you know what? I just have to hold it up to my, to my mouth and talk. Um, we'll, take, we'll take a look at the fingerprint sensor in a second. Yeah, my, my thumb is a little messed up because of the, the dry weather. So I may try to, maybe I'll train it on a different finger. All right, so double press the crown for, for Google Pay. Okay. All right, let's see if it'll take a heart rate scan right now. So let's go to, oh, it already is. Okay, 88, 89. So that's in real time. Okay. I got to charge it in a second because the battery's running low. And that's not because it's got bad battery life, it's because I haven't, um, has a hand wash timer. So, I mean, from, you know, the surface here, it looks a lot like what you have on an Apple Watch, as far as its feature set is concerned. Oh, and YouTube did update their VR app. Okay, so it might work in uh, Google Cardboard anyhow. Oh, does it have a face function? I'll take a look at that. Now, one thing I don't know is whether or not this is waterproof. I have to look into that. All right, and it's got an update coming down. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this back on the charger for a little bit and we'll let it charge up. I will say the, the Apple Watch is a little easier to, to take on and off, because the Apple Watch, the way it goes on, so on, the, on, the, on this watch, you, go, you, you stick it in, and then you gotta go un, back under. This one is like an over, overhead kind of thing. But I like the look of this better. Like I would get like a black, I, I would get like another band for it, like a black band for it. But beyond that, I like the look of it. It's pretty slick. It's got a nice display too, nice and bright. So we'll let that charge up a little bit. And then we'll take a look and see where our update is. So let's go and check on that. So this is the, the app that we're running here. And we're in the optimization period of the app update. So we'll let that kind of run through. Yeah, so the Amazon stream um, is almost real time. And the YouTube one is about 30 seconds or so behind. And that's because I'm in 4K. So if I wanted a lower um, latency, I'd have to go to like 1440p or something. Um, so the, the 4K, in order to stream in 4K, you have to be on the standard delay. 
And I'm guessing it has to do with their CDN distribution or something. So AJ's having a lot of trouble with the um, fingerprint reader on the Pixel 7. Yeah, that one worked. That time it worked. So let's, take, let's do a couple more see what happens. Okay, so that one worked. Let's turn it back on. So it's locked again, right? Yep, that didn't work. That one did work. Now part, again, in fairness, my thumb is like all crusty from the, dry, the dryness in the air already. But that seemed to work better that time. Let's try one more time here. Yeah, generally it's been working okay here, for me at least. No, oh, that time it didn't. It worked that time. That worked. Yeah, that went through. Oh, we'll go back to this Pixel Pro 7. And I think, I can't remember if I've done photos on this one yet. Um, but this one, so the Pixel 7, and it's kind of deceiving. The Apple phone's doing the same thing now. So you have your 0.5, which is your, your wide angle. You have your standard angle here, which is the, which is the one. Oops. Okay, I'm going to go back. Ah, what am I doing? That's the... The two is a digital zoom. But that's the same thing on the iPhone. The iPhone's a digital zoom. But the 5 is their telephoto lens. So it goes in further. Yeah, let's go back to the 2. It is raining hard outside. So if I go to the 5, so that, that zooms in pretty far. And if we look at the iPhone, This is the 14 Pro. So I have a, here, let's, let's compare the two. So if we look at the 0.5, so the iPhone has a wider wide angle. See, it covers more stuff. I mean, it's, a, it's different, but you can see it is a slightly wider angle. And then the two is fake. The three is the, whoops, the three is the far zoom. So let's take a look and see what it picks up. So this is, this is the telephoto, optical telephoto. That's the furthest it goes in. And the Google phone, it goes in a bit tighter. So it's got a better telephoto lens on it. Or at least it, it's maybe not necessarily better <laughs> from an image quality perspective, but it goes, it goes further. All right, so now let me wait for that update to come down or whatever it's doing. We have to wait for the optimization to finish up here. Recipe Bob says, I look good in 4K. Yeah, that's what it took to make me look good. And Logi's wondering, should we wait? I, you know, yeah, I mean, or I would pick a device that you know is going to work with Matter. Because I, I think that's going to be a big deal. App, and I think what's good is that Apple's supporting it. Because Apple's been the one that's, that I found the least compatibility with when it comes to these smart home devices. So I would wait for that. Or find one that works with Matter. Or, or someone who's committed to working with it. And William keeps getting locked out of WhatsApp due to bad... Oh, that's right, because it, a lot of these apps are authenticating based on that. Hey, Brian Parker is here. Happy Sunday to you. And William says he has a trouble with, uh, with uh, face identification, too. So, I mean, it looks like a lot of you are having trouble with, with the uh, biometrics on this. And Greg says his wife is having some speed issues with the fingerprint reader on the 6A. She has two right thumbs registered and thinks, oh, that's a, that's a good idea. Interesting. Sergio Lopez, hello there. Thanks for stopping by and tuning in. Yeah, it didn't get it that time, did it? There it goes. So let me try the face recognition and see how that works on here. So let's go to our settings. So face unlock. So let me enter my PIN number. Okay, so face added. Oh, it said I added a face. 
So let me, del let me delete the face model here. All right, so set up, let's set up face unlock. Keep in mind, if you normally wear glasses, you can wear them during setup. Looking at the phone can unlock it even if you don't intend to. Your phone can also be unlocked by someone who looks a lot like you, like an identical sibling, or if someone holds it up to your face. Using your phone to unlock is less secure than a strong pattern pin or password. So how does it work? It works with a unique model of your face to verify it's you. To create this face model during setup, you will take an image of your face from different angles. So that's how they get it. So Apple's got like a, like a little LiDAR sensor on the front. This one uses just an optical thing. So it's like kind of like how Tesla does driving. When you use face unlock, images are used to update your face model. Images used to create your face model are not stored, but the face model is stored securely on your phone and never leaves the phone. All right. So now, I'll show it to you this way. All right, so let's start. Center my head in the circle. Try fast setup instead. Let me try again. It didn't like didn't like my head. All right. Looks good. Now when you pick up your phone, okay. So it works best when there's enough light and you're not wearing a mask or dark glasses. Okay, so let's see. All right, so now we're going to just have it look at me. And that worked. Unlocked by face. Unlocked by face. Let me look at it this way. And what, it'll, what it does is it lights up the, the camera, but I could still use my fingerprint to get into. So, so far, I mean, it's, it seems like it's working okay for me. But it's one of those things where if you really, I think you really got to use the phone a lot to get a feel for whether or not it's going to have a problem. All right, let me go back to our security update and see where we're at with that. It's still, it's still optimizing. We can't do anything else with this until it's done with the optimization. Um, now, Jordan has a Pixel 6 Pro and has a problem with adding pops and clicks in the audio or video recordings if using a USB audio interface. Huh. And you've tried multiple USB interfaces. That's one thing I haven't tried with mine. It might be a power thing. And Nate Dog suspects that there might be a limitation because it's got, right, it doesn't have a specific spot where you, it's, it's kind of built into the screen. Gerard, Gerardo Valles, thank you for the follow on Amazon. And Poorly Buffalo says the banking apps need fingerprint. Right, so on the iPhone, it'll, it'll, it'll do well with the face. And James has some advice on Matter. And it could be, Jordan. Or, you know, I think these also have a different USB charging mechanism. The 3XL three, the three had USB-C, but it, maybe, it, maybe it deals with power differently. And Gary says the Pixel Watch is having issues with the cellular connection in, the Ireland, in Ireland and the UK. All sorts of problems here. <laughs> and optimization, yeah, it does take a while, doesn't it? And uh, Aden 97, your Pixel is supposed to get here today. Which one did you get? Did you get the 6A or the, because this is the 6A. And you, see, it didn't get my fingerprint that time, did it? Try it again. Nope. Now, does this one do, can we do face on this one? Let's see. Oops. Let's search here, face. This one has something called face match. 
but not face unlock. Yeah, so this one does not do a face unlock. This one does. Unless there's an update that I missed. Let me see. System updates. Oh, there's an update on this one, too. Oh, this one, I, this is a big update. So this one, I didn't install Android 13 on yet. <laughs> so I got this one before Android 13 came out. So that, that's why that one is where it's at. So we'll down, <laughs> you know, there's another stream where we're just updating phones all, all afternoon. Um, in Sweden, they got Pixel phones for the first time, but not the Pixel watch. And Odin's getting the Pixel 7 Pro. It's a nice phone. I like the way it feels. I like the way it looks. It, it's pretty powerful, too. I mean, it's not as powerful as the iPhone. And Grayson has a Pixel 7 Pro. So what do you, what do you think about it, Grayson? Is it good? Is it working out for you? And Jordan said there was an update. That's got to be really annoying when they fix it and then it comes back when they update it again, right? One thing that I've liked about the Pixel phones is that you get you know, kind of a, well, not kind of, you get a pure Android experience. Like this is what, um, this is how Google interprets what the interface should be like. And the phones are pretty quick and speedy. We've done some fun stuff with this phone. So this was the phone we used in my video where we contacted the space station with my amateur radio. So I was using this as like a little software uh, radio modem, which worked out pretty well. see here. Yeah, the, these updates take forever on these things. And we also have an update for the watch. May as well run that one real quick. Let's see. System update available for Pixel Watch. So this is going to improve GPS accuracy. So I have to do it on the watch itself, which I guess I could do while it's plugged in, right? So let's log into the watch here real quick. Let me type in my passcode. And then we're going to go. It wants me to do the update here, but my battery is too low. So I have to wait <laughs> for it to charge up a little bit. This was a spontaneous stream if it's not already apparent to all of you. I was like, oh, this stuff's on sale. I may as well take a look at it today and see how it goes. I, kind of, I must have missed the opportunity a little bit, but I do have a, a 6A review up. And how is that one doing? Let me check and see. I'm just wondering if I got any traffic on that review. Eh. So I got about 11,000 views on the 6A. A little bit of a bump for Black Friday, but not a lot. So I, I just don't get as much traffic on these because they send out, and I'm not complaining about it, but they send out so many phones that it's hard to be competitive because how many reviews can you watch, right? So that's why I did the, uh, the video where we connected it to the space station. I said, no one's going to connect their, their Pixel phone to the space station. So that's, that's, that was what I did with, <laughs> with this one. <laughs> but I did review it. Uh, Jim, thank you for the follow on Amazon. Yeah, you'll get the uh, notifications better on Amazon too, by the way. Jesse wants to know, do I think I'll ever get around to coming to Arizona? At some point, if there's some event happening out there, I'd probably go if I was invited. I'm going to be in Vegas though for CES. So Grayson says, that his Pixel 7 Pro is working out well. The only thing I do not like about it is the notch. I thought a 6.7 inch screen is going to be way bigger than my Pixel 3a XL, but apparently not. Yeah, they've been getting more efficient with the, um, with the bezels on these phones. So let me, turn, let me put this into day mode. Where's the night, night mode, day mode, whatever, switch here, let's see. Dark theme, turn dark theme off. So the notch that he's referring to is the, the camera punch out, right? The 
Right, the camera cut out. And Odin's never had an iPhone. Yeah, I, I jump back and forth. I mean, I, I mostly am on the iPhone these days, but I will say that if I did, have, if I did decide to switch to Android, um, I would probably go with the Pixel phones just because it's, again, it's kind of a more pure Android experience. And there's not a lot of bloatware on it. Actually, there's no bloatware on them, really. They have some cool features baked in. Like, for example, if I go over to the recorder here, check this out. It's got this auto transcription thing. So if I start recording right now and just start talking and I go over here to transcript, it's just on the fly doing a transcription of what I'm saying. Let me zoom in a little bit here on my camera. Um, and it's generally pretty good, as you can see. So it's you know, listening and capturing, but it's doing all of this locally. So there's no cloud component to this. And then if I pause it and uh, save it, if I go back in and play it back, I can actually jump to the spot in the Is that neat? And I think the other phones, the, the older Pixel phones do this also, but I, it's just a, like a little feature that I've always thought was pretty cool on these. I used to do um, more written kind of r reporting, so it's, if I had this when I was doing a lot of my initial written reporting, it would have made life a lot easier. Because <laughs> it's always a pain to have to transcribe. It's such a time, consum consume, time suck, you know? So Jordan says the Pixel 3a XL was a classic, love mine, generally like, yeah, I have, do I have a 3? Yeah, I, I have a Pixel 4 XL, I think. I think that's the one I have. I've got a bunch of these. And Logi's still rocking the 2 XL. If it works, it works, right? And it looks like everyone is dealing with this. Yeah, there must be a lot of optimization that's going on here. Let's see where we're at. Let's go back to the uh, settings here. It's almost there. We're in the optimization phase. So Grayson says, the only reason why I upgraded to the Pro was for security updates. Even though I don't have any security issues on my 3AXL, security updates, yeah. They cut them, when do they cut them off now? Is it like five years, I think? Is that what they, is that what they do? I can't remember. John wants to know, do I drive an EV yet? Yes, I have been driving electric cars for 10 years, over 10 years, 12 years now, actually. I started with a Volt. And that's another reason, right, you get the updates right away. And they do those feature drops too, so you get like, you get features that uh, they don't offer on other Android phones, right? Let me see if I can find the reviewer guide they sent me. So they have this uh, Team Pixel thing for the influencer crowd. And they send us a, they're constantly sending ideas and things to do with it. Um, they took a bunch of people camping too, but I didn't go on that. Pixel virtual onboarding. Let's see, I'm looking for my reviewer's guide. Maybe they didn't send one out this time. Here it is. I'm just looking to see what features are unique to it here. So that's live translation. Let's. All right, I'm back. I, I have no idea why this thing is beeping. And we hit the 55 minute mark also. Let me restart it. That was weird. 
It hit right at the same time our 55 minute thing hit, right? All right, let's let that reboot. And Curtis is getting his on Wednesday. Can't wait. Yeah, you'll be, this will be a nice upgrade for you, for sure. The camera system, I think, is very good on these, too. Because, you know, Google does a lot of their computational photography on these things. And James says the most recent um, Android security patch was an important one. So hopefully that will make my phone more secure. Maybe, that was why, maybe that's why it was beeping. Thank you very much. My reviews may be superior, but the views I get on them are not, unfortunately. <laughs> I try to not do the fluff. And, it, and it's hard because you know, the, the phone reviewing space is so saturated. So it's, it's really hard to get any of these, these videos to break through. It's also why I don't do a lot with the iPhones when they come out because I just know I'm everybody and their mother reviews them. So it's really, it's really tough. All right, so now we're back up. And is the update done? Let's take a look. Because we can at least get a sense as to, oh, it's getting hot too. Um, so update. Now, this one has wireless charging, but right now I have it plugged into the faster charger here, so it charges quicker. That screen brightness up a little bit. All right, system update. We're up to date now. All right, so that one's up to date. This one is still on the old version of Android. Hey, you know what's, let me show you something really cool first. So I, I think it's probably still, oh, it's the MSAT, hang on. Um, APRS Droid, here we go. I was gonna see if it, was, if it had saved my conversations from, I must have reset it. Yeah, I must have reset it when I was in. Um, so what, what I also tried with this phone, because um, I do a lot of a bunch of amateur radio stuff now, so I was able to contact the space station with the phone using a rubber duck antenna on my cheap El Cheapo Yesu radio, which was really fun. All right, so you know what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to run this 3D Mark Wildlife Benchmark test just to see what the differences are between the two phones. And we have the score up from the other one here. Yeah, this is a problem, Tam Man. You're right, because they don't they, they don't tell you up front. Like your phone could have updates for like 12 years or or no years, right? Um, am I in 120 hertz mode? That's a good question. Let me let me investigate. So let me go in and check in the display setting here. I think it's automatic. So I have it in 1080p full HD, smooth display. Yeah, so what it is, is it autom it's an automatic. It's an automatic. Let that finish updating real quick. Yeah, what little knowledge I have, I try to deploy. <laughs> I talk a good game, right? So yes, it does have 120 hertz. You know, it, the, the best way, I think, is that to describe it is that it just feels smoother. And you're not going to be able to see it on this stream because I'm only doing it at 30 um, frames per second. But if I were to, the animation just feels smoother. It won't, you won't be able to tell it on this stream because I'm at, I'm only at, uh, what should we call it here? Um, 30 frames per second streaming out. Did you do, that's a slow scan TV? Is that what you did, James? That's what they, that's usually what they broadcast, right? Or transmit. Thank you, Mr. Nate Dog. Thoughts on the Pixel Watch so far? Well, I'm waiting mine, for mine to charge so I can do the update. I haven't worn it long enough to know, but I will say from a, 
build quality and what I have seen of it so far, um, I like the way it feels. I like the build quality. The display looks nice on it. Um, Feature-wise, it, it feels pretty close to my, um, to my Apple Watch in the sense that it kind of does the same things. What it doesn't appear to do, it does not have a um, pulse ox sensor. Maybe the Fitbit app has that. Um, it doesn't have the pulse ox sensor. And it also doesn't appear to have the um, EKG feature either. Yeah, so it, it doesn't have some of the extra health sensors that my Apple Watch has, unless I'm mistaken. So John upgraded from the 3XL to the 4XL because the 4XL had wireless charging. After a long time, my 3XL started to have charging wire issues. Yeah, they all eventually go, don't they? All right, so let's run the, the same benchmark now we're going to run on this phone. You can get a feel for how it performs versus the other one. And I'll let this run, and I will be right back. Definitely runs a bit quicker. So I think we're going to see maybe like a 10 or 15% boost. Oop, there we go. Be right back. Okay, let's see how it did. Huh, that's interesting. That should not be getting that score. See, this one was artificially <laughs> better <laughs> than that one. Let's try this again. Unless there's some other, op there must be some other optimizations going on in the background here because this one should be, this has the, new, the newer processor. So let's try it again. Uh, Greg says it has a pulse ox sensor, but it's not yet enabled. Can you use the Pixel Watch as a remote camera shutter? I think you can. Let's try that real quick, and I'll come back to this. So let me log into the watch, the watch here again. And I think there is a camera app. I remember seeing it on there before. So let's take a look. Uh, Nexol C, thank you for the follow on Amazon. And I have my, uh, myself logged. I, it's off my wrist, so I have to type the password in every time. So I'm going to hit the band here. Oops. And I'm going to go into our list of apps. And there should be... I did see it on there when I first installed it. I don't see it. Contacts, find my phone, Fitbit, X, I must have hit that by accident. Flashlight, Google Wallet, hand wash timer, media controls, messages, personal safety, phone, settings. Let's go to settings. Let's see if there's an option. Now, there is an update that this thing is due to install to itself. 
And I'm thinking the battery might be good enough now. Yeah, I don't see it yet, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I saw some reference of the camera. So let's let this thing download its update. And then we should be able to try that out. Now I'm going to rerun this test here and see if it does better. Now I'm going to run this differently this time. This time, it might, it actually might be using some resources for, um, might be using some resources for the watch update. So I would imagine the watch is probably downloading through the phone. Does the curved side seem prone to false touches? I will try that in a second. I'll give that a test in a few minutes here. Now I got about another 15 minutes before my kids are showing back up at the house. <laughs> so we're won't be able to get everything in today, but I just want to just want to do a couple of things with, with it and the watch. So I have the Yesu 991A. I think that's the one I have, which is the, the base unit. Yeah, this is more about what I was expecting. So, you know, it's, it's marginally faster. It's not quite, you know, doubling. And it's still, like, way behind the iPhones on this test. So, for example, my iPhone Pro 14 I go into my list of benchmarks, which you can find at lon.tv slash benchmarks. Um, if we go over to wildlife, the iPhone 14 Pro scored um, double that. So the iPhone got 12,364. This got 6,013. But let's try the extreme test. Oops. And I'm curious to see what this does versus the iPhone. And I think I ran this already on here. Oh, I didn't. OK. So let this one kind of run through. Now what it's doing is it's rendering things off screen. This has the Tensor 2, which is um, Google's custom silicon. Yeah, exactly. All updates all the time. It's all we have time for on this channel. Oh, interesting, Prime. So um, it, you can't install Audible on the watch, huh? Can I do that on my iPhone, my Apple Watch? Let me look. Let me look at the watch app. So for the, on the iPhone, If I go over to my apps here, so there is an Audible app on the Apple Watch. I haven't installed it, but it's there. So maybe they're, they're going to have to, you know, and part of the problem is, is that there hasn't been, this might be why Google's doing this, because Samsung had their own watch standard, right? Like the, the Samsung Wear or whatever. And Google had Android Wear. I don't know if the Samsung Watch is, I did not mean to do that. Um, no, 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 no. Stop, stop, stop. No! Gosh darn it. See, it picks me up, and then it all goes to you know what. Let's try that again. <laughs> now we got to do that again. Um, yeah, we'll come back. And it is slippery. It is all glass. And Grayson would trade performance for battery life. Yeah, the iPhone has great performance. The battery life is not any better in the 14 versus the older one. You know, if I use it a lot, I, don't, I, I have to plug it back in. I generally, though, I have, um, and I, I neglected to show this to you earlier. Um, so on my desk here, I actually keep the iPhone, I usually keep it on a charging pad all day when I'm just sitting at my desk. I'm not sure if that's good for battery longevity or not, but... <laughs> I just keep it topped off constantly. He 
Yeah, I, I, I would say, and again, I haven't done much with the new Pixel phone here, but the iPhone on the performance side is, is significantly, especially you know, on the benchmarks at least, is much more powerful. Problem is, is that there's not a lot that takes advantage of what these devices can do to a great extent. And I, apparently, I don't know what I said. Did I say the hey word? I don't think I did. I think it was just the G word that set it, set it off. All right, we'll let this finish up here. I'm just trying to see what, what our, this is, now this is going to be for the extreme test, which I believe I ran on this one prior. Yeah. So we got on this phone a score of 1755. Let's see what the other one does. Do, 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 do. Let that finish up here. But I like the 6A a lot. I think it's a great phone. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but it's smaller and it performs really well. And as you saw, like you'll see what this benchmark comes out to be, but I would bet you the performance is not going to be all that far off. What they put in here is the same phone that's in the 6 Pro, the same processor as in the 6 Pro. So really you're just trading a few features like wireless charging and display quality and that sort of thing. And if I'm not, maybe one of you can correct me. I, I'm pretty sure the 6A doesn't support ultra wideband 5G. Let me know if I'm incorrect about that. This test will be done in a second. Do, 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 do. So here's my thought on, this is a good question. What is my thought on the next big, because you know, there hasn't been a lot. See, this is, this is weird. So we run this test initially and then it comes under the other one. And I, I'm, my guess is that maybe it's this watch updating that's bogging it down. I'm not sure. I'll run this again. So I don't wanna make you sit through me watch, running benchmarks all night. But this is a good question. I think what's gonna happen is that, and I, I hate to say it, but it's going to be Apple that's going to do this. But I think Apple is going to develop a, an AR headset that does not look like you're a nerd tech person that's going to provide an overlay onto the world that people are going to find acceptable. And I think that's going to move mobile further because, you know, granted the cameras are getting better every year, but everything has been a marginal improvement from one year to the next. And you think about it, like the 6A here, if this phone came out, three, four years ago, let's say, it would be, it would have dominated the market because it's so good, right? Um, but everything's been incremental for a while now. Even like the, if you have like an iPhone 11 from four years ago now, I'm losing track of when these phones come out. It, it's, there's not a huge difference in, in what the phone does fundamentally. And initially when you went from, for example, the iPhone one, to the second iPhone, it was a big jump because you, you got the 3G. If I'm not mistaken, the three also, they called it the three, didn't they? Uh, the iPhone 3G is what they called it. Um, the 3G also got GPS, so the location services became usable. That's, that's some mixed results on that, right? Um, the, the 3GS added additional video capability. Like there was always these big must-have features from one to the next. 
and I'll tell you what, the only reason why I've been upgrading my iPhone is that I get a good trade-in on the old one, and it doesn't hurt for me to have the latest phone, just so if there's some opportunity for content, I can do it, right? It becomes kind of like a, a, a rolling business thing, business expense for me, but. And Grayson turns his phone, yeah, it's probably good to just not have people call you. <laughs> I would agree with that, or text you or whatever. Texting now, is, all I get is text messages. I am getting now unsolicited sales texts, which drive me crazy. Can't stand it. But, so if you're curious, and I see a bunch of people are now tuning in on Amazon, this, this is the 6A. This is the 6A. And this is the 7 Pro. So you can see that the 6A is much smaller. And the performance is better on the 7 Pro, but, but not significantly so. But you do have more camera capabilities with the 7 Pro. So that's one reason to do that. Gary Glover says, me too, on the Amazon chat. So you've got you know, your wide, your telephoto, and your standard lens here. This one just has the wide and the standard, I think. Let me see. Let me pull up the camera real quick here. Yeah, so on this one, and I did a full review of this, which you can find on my um, Amazon page. So this too is a fake zoom. So that's like a digital zoom. So really your, your optical lenses are one and the 0.6 wide angle. That's all you get. But it, they do a lot of computational photography and everything with it, so it, it, the pictures actually look really good on it. And you can see my review to get more detail on that. And if you go onto the product page, you should see it there. Um, so Gary says, what brand camera? These are Google cameras. They're phones, they're built into the phone. So you've got your 6A, this is the 6A, and then I'm just waiting for this test to finish running on the 7 Pro here. And I can demo that for you in a second too. Yeah, right when I'm about to uh, wrap things up, the Amazon thing gets, gets crowded again, so I'll stick around for a little bit longer. Um, you know, it might be, I'll have to double check. It, there's, there's something running in the background because it is definitely running warmer than it should. So I may, I may run this benchmark again a little later. Let it kind of sit there and do its thing for a little while. And Chris says, maybe they will get fast enough to support VR with wireless glasses. It's the only way. Yeah, it's got to be something that, like, is something you would wear anyhow. And if you think about it, because this is something that struck me when I, I was looking at um, Google Glass when it first came out, was that Google Glass, which was the thing you wore over your head, everything it does, your smartwatch now does. You know, it, it you didn't need to wear the thing on your head to get that information. Um, but I think if it didn't look like you were wearing some contraption on your head and it was actually no more obtrusive or noticeable than a pair of eyeglasses, it probably would make a, a difference there. Yeah, we're still not where I, I would expect this phone to be because you can see the 6A is still coming in at a higher score. So I think there's probably some additional updating going on here with this. but. I will, let's go grab something here. I'll, let's take a look at the, and I can change the watch faces here. Got a bunch of different ones. Give you the overhead. This is for the Pixel watch here. And my Pixel watch is done updating? Let's see. <laughs> all updates all the time is what we do here. And if you have questions on Amazon, leave them in the chat and I will be happy to answer those for you. But I've got here, and this is, this is for the benefit of the Amazon viewers, this is the 6A, this is the 7 Pro, and they look very similar, and actually the performance, believe it or not, is not all that different. So, you know, certainly this one is a, is a slightly faster phone because it's more up to date with the newest processor, but by and large, um, you know, if you're on a budget and you don't want to spend $749, 300 bucks on this phone is actually a pretty good deal because it works really well. I haven't really found anything that doesn't work on this phone. And I'll put that in the uh, Amazon chat just to get some questions. I know they've got a bunch of people watching. I'm sure they've got questions. So let's say, um, let me go down here and say if you have questions. 
ask away. Um, so yeah, let me go back to my Amazon, or my YouTube chat. Yeah, as long as we don't become Borgs. <laughs> we are Borgs. Resistance to the AR future is, 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 fut is futile. Hey, watch. I, I, I'm in the mood to watch some Star Trek. I'll probably have to tune, figure I don't know what, what thing Star Trek is on anymore. It's Paramount Plus, right? Um, and Mohammed likes the SE2020. Great phone. It's, hit, it's the sweet spot. It's exactly it. And, you know, I think this is a good point also, is that the Google phones are not as fast. Here we go again. No, 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 no. Um, <laughs> I got to turn off the voice recognition thing. The Google phones are not as fast as the, like as far as performance is concerned, raw performance, they're not as fast as the iPhones, dollar for dollar, but do you notice that, right? Because they all seem to perform well regardless. So for example, we can go to uh, visit the NASA website here. Yeah, it's nice and, nice and quick. Say SpaceX is turning into an airline. They launch like every two days. Oh, there was a question earlier about the side and it picking up your, your input. It seems to ignore most of it on the side here. So if I'm on the edge, right on the edge here, it doesn't seem to pick up until you get over the curve. So it's like right on the curve spot is where it starts to pick up your, your fingers. The 6A has less of a curve on it. So it's, it's more of a traditional flat screen. You don't have that, the glass isn't kind of curving over the corner. You know what's interesting too, Curtis, about the touch screen is how my kids, even at very young ages, interacted with the phones. Like it was not, like there was no, they didn't have to learn how to use it because their fingers, you know, the tapping on their fingers was such a natural experience for them. So this phone though was done updating, I think, but the, the watch was updating. Let me see if it's, if it's really done. There could be some other updates that it's doing in the background. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to give it a, a night and then I'll run it again. Yeah, it is up to date and it said it was done. So we'll see what, what comes out of that. Yeah, that's another one, right? That's a, that's a big one is to put it in there. And I guess what, one of the things the Pixel phones do is they have, um, it will answer with an AR or AI like uh, assistant that will screen the calls that are not in your phone book. So that's another neat little, neat little thing that it does. Now, what this one does, I have to move it around. Um, this one does have wireless charging. So if you have a wireless charging pad, which I do somewhere around this mess, there it is. Um, let me plug it in here. Um, you can plug it in, or you can, you can use it without having to plug it in. And I use a wireless charger at night on my phone, and also just sitting at my desk. So I'll plug it in here real quick. So this is like your standard Belkin. I got another one that I have in the thing also. So if I unplug it here, I'll turn this off real quick, and if I place it down, usually it finds it. Let's see. There it goes. Part of the challenge is you got to get it kind of centered in the right spot. So right there. So, so you would think like you would push it off this way, but that's too far. So it's got to be like the camera edge has to, let me show you, it's got to be like right, right about there. And that charges it. So I have another one. Yeah, let me give you my other view here. So this is the one I use on my, I'm looking at the wrong camera. <laughs> this is the one I use from, this one I like a lot because it's a stand. And so I can monitor my Amazon chat, right, with the phone in the charger that way. So I got a bunch of these. 
they're really handy to have. All right. Yeah, smart contact lenses. That's where it's going. Or they just plug into your brain. That's, uh, that's how it goes. Powered by blinking. I could, use, I could go for that. Uh, Dwight D. Watson, thank you for the follow on Amazon. Now let's see if my watch is updated yet. So bear with me for a second here. We're going to check out the watch. It's like stuck on its update here. So downloading update. I'm just going to leave that there. And we'll see what happens. Frank Cromer, have I seen the Archer Midnight Electric VTOL? I saw... Um, Actually, there's an airline in Cape Cod that will be beginning to electrify their fleet, which I thought was interesting, and hopefully it brings down the cost. Good short-run you know, short kind of things. Star Trek The Next Generation saves my sanity constantly. <laughs> what if you press your thumb against the edge of the bezel? That would be how you hold your phone in your right hand and touch the screen with your Okay, let's try that. So let's take a look, take the phone off the charger here, and we'll go back in. So I'm going to hold like this, so it doesn't seem to get screwed up until I'm over there. So it's pretty good at guessing your intent. It's only when I put, put it here that it thinks that I'm doing a pinch to zoom. And if you put a case on it, obviously that would, um, that would impact, impact things a bit. But I like the, you know, it, the bezels are pretty, and you know, it's part of it's deceiving because of how they, how they tilt the, um, or curve the screen. But it's nice, it's got, it doesn't have very visible bezels on here. You do have the, you know, the camera cut out there. And apparently this Translate app, let's try this real quick, conversation. Hello, how are you today? Hola, ¿cómo estás hoy? See? So you can have a conversation with somebody. And what it's doing right now, it's, it'll be waiting for somebody to speak Spanish. Um, can you tell me where the men's room is? ¿Puedes decirme dónde está el baño de hombres? Let's try a different language. Let's see. Let's try... Um, can it do... Uh, Let's do simplified Chinese. Let me download that. So you got to download the dictionary because this is all happening in, in real time, essentially. So I don't think it's going back out. So this is uh, Android 13 now on these phones. All right, so now I got Chinese. Can it do Chinese? Let's see. So we'll do simplified Chinese. Yeah, I think it does. Can you tell me where the closest McDonald's is? And so what it's doing now is it's waiting for someone to speak Chinese back. Oh, maybe, maybe it's not. This <laughs> Oh, I see. So, so what you do is you show this to the other person and say, this is how we're going to talk to each other. So it's got a lot of languages. That's pretty neat. Um, and Redbeard says the cellular modem in 7 is way better. Yeah, the 6 felt to me like kind of like a miss. But you know what was good it was that they developed an identity for the phone, and that, that kind of carried forward into this new one. So that's worked out, I think, well for these. Cameras are good. Um, I haven't done a lot of pictures on this one, but I, I did do a lot with the 6A. Um, very happy with the 6A. I'm sure I'll be happy with how the pictures look on this one. But um, from, from the video standpoint, I still think the iPhone is the better video camera. <laughs> That's funny, James. <laughs> um, Grayson says, I wish Google would leave the menus alone when holding down the power button. 
Let's try that. So I hold down the power menu. Oh, so that, that's going to give me the assistant. If I hold down the power, let's see, was I holding around the right button? And by the way, the other thing this phone doesn't have is it doesn't have an SD card. Neither, neither one of them do. There's no SD card option on these. So you have two SIM cards that you can put in. Have I checked out the Honor Magic phone? No, I haven't. Can I get, do they work on U.S. carriers? Because that would be a, a big thing for me to be able to find a phone that works in the U.S. So I see this a lot on the iPhone also. I'm always asked on the iPhone now too. Each time you press it, yeah, it wants to select a browser, right? It doesn't remember the default. Probably because people inadvertently set a default and wanted to change it. Got some new uh, Amazon followers to thank. D. Do, D. Kramer, Sh uh, Shed, and Dwayne Ward. Thank you all for tuning in today. Yeah, we're just doing a little, little bit of uh, setup and testing here. And we have the Pixel Watch that I got in recently also. And if you want to see what it looks like next to the, I, the Apple Watch, I can show you that. So, you know, in, in many ways, it, it feels very similar. Um, the screens look very close. I mean, obviously, the, the Pixel Watch here is, is round. Um, but it's clear that even from the band, like the material of the band feels the same. Um, the screen looks the same. It's got many of the same physical features on it. So, for example, here you've got your, your crown in the same spot. You can push the crown in. You've got the button above it. So the Apple has its button over here. And so the things that I use my watch for mostly are just for timekeeping, tra you know, keeping track of where I'm going. Um, what I love about it is when I double tap, I get Apple Pay. And I can go hit the... Um, hit the subway turnstile thing with it. So, and what's nice is that I type in on my phone where I want to go on the subway, and I get full directions and everything. Um, DD wants to know, does it have live translation, or is it the same as Google Translate? My understanding is, and I'm actually looking at this right now on their reviewer guide, I can answer this question for you. Hang on, let me look up Translate. So this is live translate. I'm going, to read, I'm going to read to you exactly what they, what they say here. So they say it, is, um, it allows you to chat in 16 languages, it reads signs, yada, yada. Translate text, da, 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 da. translate select. I'm just reading through this to see if it's going to answer the question. All right, live translate uses text translation and speech recognition to translate text and speech into the user's. Yes, so with cloud quality machine learning built into the Tensor 2, or G2, so the... These languages, and I can't show you the list here. I'll read it off to you. So these are the languages it will do without a cloud connection on the translate. Hang on, I just lost my spot. All right, so it'll do, ready? English, French, Japanese, Spanish, German, Italian, traditional Chinese, which we were just doing, simplified Chinese, Portuguese, Hindi, Polish, Russian, Dutch, Korean, Thai, and Turkish. So those languages it will do without a connection, just built into the, into the device. And my assumption is that's the two-way. So it should be able to listen for that from the person you're talking to and then um, get your, your English going on there. So if we go back to the Translate app... I'm, I'm so used to my iPhone that I'm not following it correctly here. So, yeah, so this is all done. Here, let's try another one. Let's say, um, hey, honey, what's for dinner tonight? That's my evening conversation. <laughs> hey, 亲爱的, 今晚晚餐吃什么? And, and I, will, I will add that I'm not asking her what she's cooking. I'm asking her what she would like me to cook for her because I am the dinner provider in this family. <laughs> um, B wants to know, do I have F0GX on my shelf back there? I do not. I have, um, I don't think I have any Super Nintendo games on display, but I've got a bunch of NES games. Uh, Metroid, Duck Hunt, Super Mario 3, Baseball, Skater Die, Paperboy. Got some Game Boy games. I got the gold Zelda. That's my wife's uh, golden Zelda back there. So, but I don't have any Super Nintendo. I don't, I don't have F0 at all. 
at least in cartridge form. But I have some, I have some Super Nintendo games in the back. All right, this watch has not updated, so hang on a second. Let's go back and see why we haven't updated yet. Because it has a, enough charge now. It was, a, it was an issue that I had with my, um, oh, it needs to be charging. This was an issue that I had with my Apple Watch back in the day, that the updates would always fail. They would go super slow. Um, all right, let me do this one more time here. So it needs to be charging in order to update. And then we're back to the system update downloading. All right, so we'll let that hopefully finish so I can actually review this thing. <laughs> D is here. Hello there. Yeah, ask questions. I'm here to answer questions for you. Um, yeah, well, I didn't realize she was into Zelda until we were dating for about a year or so, and I, and I had put an emulator on my laptop, and I was playing like Mario or something, and she's like, do you have Zelda? I'm like, of course I have Zelda. And she's like, oh my God. Then I, I didn't see her for a week. Like, she took my computer and played Zelda all week. <laughs> and he said the uh, computers behind him gave me a, a flashback. Yeah, so these are, these actually sort of work. This, this Apple II GS does work. I have to replace the power supply. And then the Mac SE30 needs um, some, some recapping of the electronics for its display. So as soon as I have a friend that knows how to do that stuff, I will <laughs> get, that stuff, uh, get that stuff updated. And another thing we have on my, we were playing with earlier, oh, I left the AC power on this thing. Um, so this thing was staying on before, by the way. All right, turn that off. There we go. Um, this is a neat battery, by the way. It's on sale. What is the price of it here? So D, you know what's interesting? D's on Amazon, who's... Uh, Bringing up the topic also reminds me of pixelated games. Pixelated games are back in vogue. So you can get a lot of like, first of all, a lot of the retro games are being sold again, the same games. Um, one of the things I'll be doing a little bit later is a stream of um, some Atari, the Atari remix that just came out, which is, looks awesome. It's our Atari collection that just came out looks really fun. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's fun to have these games. You know, it's funny, people are appreciating the games better now than they did before. Now I've got this lamp out here, I'm waiting for things to update, um, because this uh, Anchor power bank, now you've got to be careful with this. I've got an LED bulb on here, so this won't blow it out, but this will do 100 watts, and it's got an AC outlet on it. So you can plug in any standard plug, if you put it in the right way, and then if you turn on the AC power, there it goes. See? And it's all battery powered. It, it'll run for, I think we did some calculations on it earlier. I think this will run for like four or five hours at least, just off the battery. Pretty cool. It's, uh, it's neat. So uh, D wants to know, first of all, thank you for the kind words, D. Um, why would I recommend a Google Watch over an Apple or Fitbit watch? Um, so I think it's a matter of what platform you're on. So these Pixel watches, if I'm not mistaken, and I will be corrected if I am wrong, the Pixel watches here will work on um, any Android phone, or at least mostly up-to-date Android phones. So they'll work with the Pixel phones, but also other Android brands. I think they'll work with Samsung and all the others. The Apple Watch, of course, only works with Apple hardware. So you can't use an Apple Watch on Android, for example. Um, so that's a big reason. Uh, Google bought Fitbit. So this, for all intents and purposes, is a Fitbit because it actually works with the Fitbit app. So this is a Fitbit, but it's Google's now branded watch for their phones. And Mark Lassoff is here. Hey, good to hear from you. So how did you see me? Did, did it like put me on the front page of Amazon, or am I just in the electronics section? So what happens is, is that they, they randomly rotate us in um, to different parts of the Amazon uh, ecosystem here. So that's how, I, that's how I pop up on your screen. 
So every once in a while, I get on the front page of like the actual Amazon, and it's it's crazy. I get like all these. I, I think I had one stream that had like eighty five thousand views or something because they put me on the front page of Amazon. It's pretty wild. So Mark and I appeared on the radio together many years ago. That's how I met him. We were on WNPR together for a, a show. Um, yeah, <laughs> I should get. I I have a a small version of that lamp. Did anyone watch um, the new Christmas Story movie? Oh wow! So I was on your front page of your amp. So was that the app or the um, or the the website? Let me pull up the app here and see what I get. Yeah, it's kind of I don't know how it works, but I think there's some algorithmic selection in how it puts these things up on the screen. So what happens is is that if we if we cover items that are on sale, and thank you for the follow, Mark. If we cover items that are on sale, um, a lot of times they boost us there. So. So Mark is supposed to be working. Do you know what I'm doing? I'm supposedly working right now too, but I'm playing with phones and watches. <laughs> That's my job now, so. <laughs> and Ravaging Wolverine has a power bank with an AC outlet. Yeah, you know why I got it? Um, because I have devices that don't draw all that much power, but they, um, they don't have a USB connector. So, so many things these days have USB connectors but how great is it that I can take my, so my Canon camcorder that we're going to CES with, I can plug it in right here and charge it while we're walking around. So I can keep everything topped off. And as we found out earlier, I can top off on the AC, but also charge over USB. Oddly, even though it'll do 100 watts out of this, um, the most it'll do out of the USB-C is 45 watts. And you charge it through this. So you plug this into, like, so I could plug this into, into this, for example, to charge it. So that's how I, I charge this thing up. And it takes a while to charge. It's a big old, big old battery. So that takes a while. Um, so I have not looked around for watch straps yet for the Pixel. And I would guess that it's going to be directly proportional to how well it sells. So the Apple Watch, and Apple is pretty smart about this, to be honest, is that they haven't, so even though the Apple Watch size, the screen is, see now it's going off now, the screen is larger than it was before, the, the band is the same size. So they haven't changed the band size since it was introduced which is probably why the, the watch is still mostly square. Because if they made it a, I guess they could probably figure it out, but if they made a rounded watch like this one, the bands would all be different. So I think it's going to, if this takes off, I think you might see more third-party bands come out for it. Yeah, go ahead and eat something. I'm going to start thinking about dinner in a few minutes myself. So I watched it, and I thought it was pretty good. You know what was funny about that movie is that um, as a kid, I related to, and it was, it's fun that they had the same actor, because I'm, I'm pretty much the same age as he, he is, I think. So I'm 46. I think he's about, he's about my age. And it was fun to, this is what I was thinking as I was watching the new film. It was fun because I related to him as a 10-year-old when I watched that movie for the first time. I was like, Eight or, eight or ten or whatever. I related to him then as a fellow child. And now as, as a 40-something adult with kids, I related to him that way. It was kind of fun, right? Like you can relate to the character in two different contexts. So I could watch the old movie and remember relating to, you know, remembering how I was as a kid and what I, in that experience of being a kid in that period of time. And I, granted, I didn't grow up in the 40s like the movie set, but, you know, for the most part, I would say, you know, the the, the holidays were generally the same, whether you grew up in the 40s, the 50s, or you know, the gifts were different, but the, the gist of being a kid and going to school, my kids have a very different world. I mean, it's very different than when I was a kid. Um, some things are the same, but a lot of things are different. But it's funny that I can relate to him in different ways. That's, that's what I got out of that other movie, was that, that relative thing there. Um, I think the original was better than the second one for Home Alone. It might be fun to have Macaulay Culkin do an update on that one too. Why not, right? 
So that's, that's that. So what else can we do with this phone? So we did the translate. One thing that I didn't show, well, I showed earlier, but I'll show again. This is what's cool. So this is another feature that does not require a cloud connection. So I can hit the record button here. And as I am talking, and I'll just talk at my usual pace here, it will write down everything that I say. And this phone does it. This is the 7 Pro. The 6A does it too. They've been doing this on the Pixel phones for a while now. And this is all done on the AI built into the chip. So it doesn't require that you do any special cloud thing. It just runs locally. And if you're a reporter that is often doing a lot of transcription, this is a lifesaver because not only does it get all of your words written out from both parties speaking, um, it will also timestamp everything as you can see. So when I go ahead and stop this and save it, if I go back to, um, yes, yeah, is this one. If I go back to here and I go to the transcript, I can tap on any word. That you do any special cloud thing, it just runs locally. And, if you're a and you know what's crazy is that the quality of the transcription on this is so much better than what you get on the Google voicemail thing. It's kind of it's kind of crazy when you think about it. Um, there you go, make it. Maker, what's that website where you download all the 3D stuff? If I try to, oh no, we could try that. So let me look up Genshin Impact real quick. I'm pretty sure I have installed it on here. So let's go into, I think it's on here, did I put it on here? Oh, I didn't. So the only problem is if I put Genshin Impact on here now, it's gonna take an hour to download everything. So let's, let's what, what's like a one that I can down, that's quick that can show off the graphical horsepower here? Well, I'll install it, but it's gonna, I have to get that 18 gigabyte <laughs> download. <laughs> Let that kind of go through here while we're doing that. So it looks like this is Wear OS. So a lot of these apps work. And somebody was asking about Audible earlier. Is it, does it have a Wear OS version? It doesn't. So Audible, does, as was mentioned, doesn't work on the Wear OS. Ed says, what do I need on Cyber Monday? You know, the, the, the things that people have been really excited about, beyond, you know, granted we're looking at Pixel phones, but this, uh, this 747 charger from Anchor, which I, I bought this, I love it. Everybody's been talking about it. I did have to get an extension cord for it because it, it, I'm not crazy about the overall design of it. So, I mean, it's nice to have something compact with this flip over thing, but it, it's, so, it's pretty heavy and it falls out of the outlet. And what they want you to do to prevent it from falling out of the outlet is to, I kid you not, use this suction cup thing with it. <laughs> so it would have been better if they had just come up with an extension cable on it to begin with. So I bought these like Amazon Basics extension cables just to extend it. And I'll tell you what, like this battery, I'm digging this battery. And the reason I'm digging it is because it's peace of mind. because I, I no longer have to worry about my cameras dying out in the field. It's like a little portable generator. And the amount of power that I use on it is not significant. So it's, I'm, I'm excited about that one. So those things are good. Um, there are some things that I was going to do today that are not on sale anymore, but the Atari collection on the, all the major consoles was on sale. There's a couple other things there too. Um, John wants to know, if two people are speaking, can it put something, I don't know. I need to have more friends. To test that. Maybe when my wife comes home, I'll try that and see. I think it, I don't think it does. Let me look and see. Let me look that up for you real quick. Because it's in my recorder, automatically records and transcribes speech in real time. Oh, it does. So it now labels speakers so you know who said what. So you know what, let's try something real quick. I think what I could do is, why don't we pull up, um, you know what, I'm gonna pull up one of Retro RGB's videos because I know he won't mind me trying this out. And I'm just gonna play his audio so that the phone can hear it. And we'll try doing a two-person thing here. I have a question.
question for my fellow nerds. Okay, so let me pull this up here real quick. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to get this going, and we're going to simulate me talking to um, my friend Bob. Because I have I have no, nobody ever comes and visits me in in the house. And to be honest with you, my 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 area my workspace here is embarrassing. Like it looks okay in this zone, but the rest of this place is like just an explosion of tech. And I, and I do these tech sales where I get rid of stuff and I get more, I get more stuff. And I give, away, I give away a lot of stuff. And I found from a karma perspective, the more I give away, the more I get. It's crazy. All right, so we're going to do a two-person experiment here. So let's see what, if it can tell the difference between two voices. So I'm going to start, and I'm going to talk and talk and talk, and talk and talk and talk. And then I'm going to play this video. I have a question for my fellow nerds. How many of you have spent days, weeks, or even months perfecting a multi-cade system? A multi-cade system? That sounds interesting. Well, you know, it didn't, it didn't detect the two voices. Let's see. So maybe our voices are too close. All right, so let's try a, a let me see if I can find, um, I was trying to find something that's not going to get me into copyright issues. Um, why don't we try like a female voice and see if that might work differently. So who's a good, I'm trying to think who I can pull up real quick. Um, why don't I pull up, see if there's anybody live here that I know. Oh, I know what we can do. We can do, um, so my daughter and I watch the, the Side Surf Cake Studio all the time. Let's try, let's try her real quick and see how that works. So I, want, I just need to have not a lot of music. I don't think she does a lot of music in it here. Now let's try this so one. Yeah, what I wanted to say was I'm super happy to have everybody here. I'm so glad that you're watching. We're going to make a mystery cake. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. Okay, we're so gonna get... we're going to try that. Yeah, what... So let's try that. Here we go. So we'll put her on first. So here's me. I'm, I'm talking. I'm going to talk and talk and talk. And then we're going to try her, her voice and see what happens. What I wanted to say was, I'm super happy to have everybody here. I'm so glad that you're watching. We're going to make a mystery cake. I'm a mystery cake? I, I don't know about a mystery cake. That. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be separating the two. It's supposed to do that. Unless there's a setting you have to enable for that. Because it was telling me that in my, um, in my reviewer guide here. Where did my reviewer guide go? Let's see. Let me pull this back up again. Recorder. Audio is transcribed without ever leaving your phone. After the audio is transcribed, it's discarded. If once you downloaded, da 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 da. That's yeah. It now labels speakers so you know who said what in your recordings, making your recordings more useful. So let me go back and see if maybe it does that after the fact. first. So here's me. I'm, I'm talking. I'm going to talk and talk and talk. And then we're going to try her, her voice and see what happens. What I wanted to say was, I'm super happy to have everybody here. I'm so glad that you're watching. You know, I wonder if it, if it needs, like, the microphones to determine where the person is. That could be what, what it needs to do. So I'll, I will try this with my daughter and see. So this app is built into the Pixel phones. I don't think it's a, it, it's a general Android app. And it's called Recorder. So it's on the Pixel phones only. They introduced this with like the Pixel 3 or 4 phone when it came out. And this is amazing. Like, if you're a, like I said, if you're a reporter and somebody that does a lot of transcription, it's a lifesaver. And you can just let it run. So for example, I'll put Bob from Retro RGB back up again. Um, only to have one so of your let me friends go. come over, try the only game you haven't configured yet. And this happens. Yo, this shit's broke, bub. If that strikes a nerve with you, stick with me, because I'll show you how to significantly decrease the chance of that happening if you're using a Mr. FPGA system to power your multicade. It doesn't seem to get the Mr. Uh, FPGA system. I'm guessing that it must look for the direction of the speaker to determine if there's multiples. Because I don't see um, any option to label that. 
but it's generally very accurate. It's been accurate for a long time. I think this feature came out with the Pixel 3. Um, when are I going to have a live stream on Monday? You know, live streaming for me is a very spontaneous decision. So for example, today, I've been working all day today. So I did a, I, you know, I, I, we, it's, we have a long weekend for the Thanksgiving holiday and my wife and the kids have been hanging out with the cousins and stuff. So I've been, I had a day where I didn't do anything. I can't, I can't do it anymore. I have to like, I have to keep busy. So um, I uh, said, you know what? I'm gonna do a video, which I did. I reviewed the, the Lenovo gaming Chromebook and then I've been doing these live streams because I've had, I have a huge to-do list and a lot of the items on my to-do list are things that were on sale at Amazon. So I said, oh, this is a great opportunity. I can kill two birds with one stone. I can test everything and then um, come back here and start messing around with, um, with stuff. All right, here's Genshin Impact, but I think I have to download like a huge update on it. <laughs> So Ed started with the Pixel XL and now has, yeah, so if you have the 4A, you have this app right now. It's the recorder app. So if you, if you log into that, uh, if you pull up that app, which is on your phone, um, you will have that capability. Yeah, and, and it doesn't know the, uh, the whole Mr. thing, right? I did update my Mr. last night. That was one thing I did do for fun last night. And you know, what I, you know what I did on my, on my mister last night was I, I, I ran uh, the DOS one, AO486, and then I logged into a BBS. <laughs> I was chatting with a bunch of uh, ham, hams that were on Fidonet. <laughs> I'm a nerd. I'm like, a, I'm like an uber nerd. Um, someone asked about software defined radio on Pixel 6a. It won't work because OT. Oh, is that interesting? On Pixel 6, OTG is not supported. I didn't realize that. I still have my, um, my radio down here. Let me try that out real quick. Didn't we use the 6A yesterday with it? Which phone did I use? And now I'm getting an update on this phone. It wants me to update. This is the 6A for everybody watching on. Uh... Oh, so this didn't finish updating. So let me finish downloading that. I thought we were running uh, SDR++ on this. No, we did on the tablet. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay, so let me go grab... Um, I still have all of my stuff from that experiment down here, so maybe we'll try it out real quick and see if it indeed does not like it. <clears throat> I just got to find my my little OTG dongle, because I likely put that away somewhere. Yeah, this, um, I have to take a day off, well, not a day off, but I have to take a full day of just organization down here, because it is probably the worst it has ever been. So I got my software defined radio dongle here. I'm just curious. Now you got me thinking about it. I wonder if it's going to do it or not. So let me go pull up uh, SDR. So what we're about to do here is while we're waiting for the up the uh, this update to come down, uh, J Jeremy J and Brandy, thank you for the follow. We're going to get super nerdy here because. One of the things you can do with your phone these days is turn it into a shortwave radio. And so I'm going to grab some software here called SDR++, which we think may not work on this phone, but I'm curious. So let's grab the APK. And the uh, Genshin Impact is going to take a while to install here. So. Genshin Impact is 18 gigabytes. I'm assuming it's a good game, right? Have people played that? All right, so we're going to let that download here. This is, by the way, the 6A, and this is the 7 Pro. Both phones are great. What I like about the 6A 
is that it's a very, it's, it was, I thought it was a good value at its original price, but at its current price, it's even better. All right, so let's install that. All right, so now let's plug in. I can't remember which way this goes. Oops. And we'll go and download SDR++. It's, it sees it. And now we got to go through all the, the stuff we went through last time. Hang on a second. Let me just change the uh, auto rotate is on. It, did, it does see it. So when I plugged it in, here, I'll do it again. Let me close out the app here. So let's go load it up again. And Bob says, No Man's Sky on the Switch is 4 gigabytes. That's it? That's crazy. Yeah, this is 18. And then, like, there's updates that they push down, and then you're waiting for, like, another 18 gigabyte update. It's crazy. All right, so let's go back to SDR++. So, and you'll see it here. Now, I did it before. And I need to make an adjustment on the settings here. So remember last time we went through this issue where everything is too big. And I have to go to I'm trying to find the setting that I need. There we go. I can move this over here. Um, at high DPI skill, we're going to turn that off. We're going to go to 100%. There we go. And then we're going to go over to our source, which is going to be RTL SDR. I think I have to reset the app so that we get the right size now. All right, try it one more time. And now it should load up with the smaller, yeah, perfect, okay. Now it's really tiny. <laughs> now I forgot what I did the last time because remember it was like we had to do it, it didn't initially start listening until I did something. All right, let's see here. I think I had to like cycle it a couple of times and it started. There it goes, oops. There it goes. All right, it's working. All right, so now, again, we're just waiting for something to finish up here. Now I don't have my, um, an antenna attached, but I will turn on my ham radio here and what we're going to do is tune to the VHF calling frequency for amateur radio, which is 146. It's going to be hard to navigate on this thing. One four, ah! All right, I need to come up with a different <laughs> strategy here. Because <laughs> it's right up at the top and I can't type it in. Um, Hang on, let me grab my, my mouse and keyboard. This is what happens when you try to do something on a phone with a tiny screen. <clears throat> but to answer the question initially, it does look as though um, OTG does work on here, on the 6A, because we are getting the RTL connecting. Uh, Shirazad Hashemi, thank you for the follow on Amazon. And what we're doing right now, folks, is uh, actually turning our phone into a shortwave radio, essentially. And what I was going to do real quick was just connect up my mouse so I can actually tune to the right frequency. If you haven't played with one of these before, this is called the RTL SDR. And I call this the gateway drug for uh, amateur radio operators. <laughs> You, you'd be amazed, like you get this thing, you could start tuning into radio from all over the world. It works exceptionally well. It's like 30 bucks and you're starting. And so I, I got one of these and I spent like a month doing everything every night, just like tuning into different stuff and seeing what was around me. And now I've got an amateur radio license because it's like, oh, I, gotta, I wanna be a part of this. And it's amazing, like it's not just 
ham radio people talking to each other. There's data going back and forth. I've connected to the space station with it. It's just like all sorts of cool stuff you can do. All right, so now I'm going to pair up my keyboard here. And then I should be able to do the pairing on this thing. So we're going to pair up uh, a Bluetooth mouse with this while we're still waiting for the 18 gigabytes to get pushed down on this thing. Trackpoint keyboard, there we go. 859944. Okay. And now I've got a mouse that I can use, I think. So SDR plus plus. Hopefully the mouse works on that. Oh, it doesn't work on there either, huh? Yeah, so the problem is it's so tiny now that I can't get into, I can't actually change the frequency. But it did, it did work, so we were able to do that. So the short answer to the question was OTG does work <laughs> on, uh, on that phone. All right, let me go back to some of my questions here. Yeah, I've got a, a neat uh, distribution that I'm doing this Patreon with that you can download right onto like, uh, I forgot the guy, he's out in California, he does a lot of uh, packet stuff, so I've been playing around with that. Can I connect the, to the Lenovo 10e? What is the 10e? A oh, Chromebook tablet. I don't think so. I'm not sure it's going to work on a Chromebook. All right, we're just going to wait for this to finish downloading. Now, what's going on with my watch update? <laughs> so let me pop into my watch here and see if it has updated yet. Uh, let's see. Nope. It says it's still updating. I think I might just reset the watch, maybe? In fact, I don't even know how to reset the watch. Yeah, we're having a hard time getting the system update to update on here. Oh, it's almost done. So this reminds me a lot of the experience with the Apple Watch in the early days where it took hours to download an update. Oop. All right, let that finish downloading. It has to stay plugged in the whole time also, so. Um, but some other things on these phones, um, the camera on this is great. So if we go into the camera, this is the 6A again. So again, from a, from a video perspective, I like the, um, the iPhone better. That's my dog, but it'll do, it'll do 4K 60 video. It's got a good stabilizer on it. I, I don't remember if it's optical stabilization or not, but it does, it does a good job. <clears throat> and I don't know if there's anything else on this phone that I have for pictures, let's see. Yeah, so I took, I took a bunch of pictures when I first got it. So, and the other thing that I noticed on it and this is true of the iPhone to some degree, is that this, for example, is not a portrait shot, but optically, the way the lens is configured, you get a good amount of bokeh on it. This, again, is a 6A. Um, a good amount of bokeh on it naturally, just based on how the lens operates. So you can see the, the sunflower here was like super sharp, and the rest was kind of blurred out. And it's crazy, this wasn't taken out long ago, but like the whole backyard now is just barren. <laughs> Here's another example. So again, super sharp in the front and a nice natural bokeh in the back. So I've often recommended to people that get in tight on the with the phone to take your picture 
because a lot of times you're not going to need the portrait mode and some of the, the little glitchy artifacts that come from that. Here's another example. So you can see like just how sharp that is. And again, not portrait mode. This is just natural, natural bokeh. And uh, the dog is a she. So she was a rescue, a Siberian Husky that I rescued back in 2014. So I've had her almost uh, eight or nine years now. So I got her right after, so my, my, um, my prior dog was also a Husky and she passed away when she was 17. Here's some other fun. So this is the, I like to test the stabilization of the front camera. And you can see how stable it is even when you're walking. So it's pretty good. Now this is a portrait mode photo. And they have this other feature. Maybe let me go find another. Yeah, okay, so on this, this is the portrait mode thing. So what you can do, I'm just trying to remember how to do this now. They have like a feature that allows you to take things out. And it does it with like, let's see if I can remember how to do it. And this is another fe feature that is on the other Pixel phones also. The magic eraser. So watch this. So turn the magic eraser on. And what it's going to do is it's going to find things that it's going to suggest that I can take out of the picture. So for example, I can tap most of the time. <laughs> if it doesn't find something immediately. Oh, so, so it, it, it found like this, this thing, but I could actually go ahead and just do the dog and dog is gone. It has like a little bit of fluffiness left after that, but, but you get a, a sense of how that works. Um, and you have to be really careful with it. So let's say I want to get rid of this thing over here. I can just circle around that a little bit. Boop. And it finds what you're, what you're looking for and gets rid of it. Isn't that cool? I didn't get it all up there. There we go. So when, when it can identify an object, and this is all this AI stuff that their Tensor processor does apparently. So that feature, again, Magic Eraser. Now granted, you see that in other things too. I mean, the iPhone's starting to do similar kinds of things, but um, let's see, there's another example I could show you. Not a great photo. <laughs> but here it'll suggest blur the background. Not a portrait photo, but it can turn it into one. Now I was looking to see how it handles those kinds of lighting situations. That's, again, one thing that I found the iPhone does a little bit better, maybe, arguably. Again, not a portrait photo, but you get that nice natural bokeh. This, by the way, is the 6A. This is not the 7 Pro's camera. So it's a good camera for, you know, kind of like a budgety kind of phone. And if you're someone who's like just has an old smartphone, and you go to this, it's like it's so much better, right? Let's try the magic eraser on this real quick. So edit. And we'll go to tools, magic eraser. And let's get rid of the playhouse in the back there. Let's see if it can do that. Yep, got rid of it. Boom, gone. And you got a little bit of a cloud there afterward, but unless you're really looking for it. Now, the other thing it can do is this camouflage. So you see that, see the kids slide right here? That didn't do what I intended. <laughs> here, let's try it with the, uh, the flowers here. So it turns them green. So if you have something that's like really distracting, you can run the camouflage on it and it won't erase it, but it'll, it'll try to match the color with the background. So that's pretty cool. So neat stuff. And that's the, again, 6A, but it's also on the 6 Pro here. Now, where's our update? How's our update doing here? Let's take a look here and see how that's coming along. Yeah, so if you have a Fitbit, this is like the, the Google, it's still downloading. <laughs> um, this is the Google version of it.
But there are some cool features that they kind of work in with their AI. What, what was most intriguing to me, though, was that the 7 Pro, from a feature perspective, um, didn't get a lot of new features. And I think my time with you may be, no, that's the UPS guy. Or who is it? Yeah, UPS. Or Amazon. Amazon is delivering right now. I don't know what they're delivering, but we'll have to see what that is. All right, so I'm going to let that finish downloading. We're 80% there on Genshin. Um, <laughs> there's a Twilight Zone episode that can be based on that. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's happening. But the algorithms are getting a lot better, for sure. Um, can you connect your RTL SD? Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, so I, uh, I answered that one earlier. Yeah, so the, um, yeah, again, the RTL SDR, they go in and out of stock. I am responsible for clearing out their inventory a couple of times because my video on this, like, explode. I could, I was really surprised by how much interest there was in this. And for me, what was so fun about this thing is that it was, it was covering an area of technology that I'd never played with before. And so it was, it's, it was fun to just kind of explore that. And I still have a long way to go because I have another uh, amateur radio license to go out and earn. So <laughs> classic pixel stuff, always updating. Yeah. Yeah, no, these are things my wife probably ordered. I have, I don't, I don't believe I'm expecting anything today. Although I am getting that new um, larger Kindle tablet in soon. So that, that was something I was eager to try out. And what else do I have on here? And this is kind of neat too. It has like these neat dynamic um, uh, back, backdrops here. So you can see the earth is actually moving. And I think this image gets updated with real time satellite imagery. So you, you get a pretty accurate depiction of what the world looks like at this moment. And Bob said, <laughs> yeah, you know, the, uh, the, the amateur radio um, community on YouTube is very tight. And actually got uh, a really great tour of the ARRL headquarters, which happens to be right here in Connecticut. And we'll be doing more there. So, yeah, I'm going to be doing some more with it. What, what's hard is that this, for general consumers, is very accessible. It's when you get into the other stuff where you start, it starts to lose people because of the fact that you need a license to do any of it. Um, but I did, on this phone, we use this to connect to the space station's um, amateur radio repeater, the digital repeater. So we actually sent text messages from this phone up to the space station and then communicated with somebody through it. And I have a whole video on that. And that was fun because that video took a lot of time and effort to plan and it it did okay, which was good. So here's a good question that I think is very relevant. Um, how does the 7 compare to the 6A? So I think, here's what I would say. Now, I, I will, let, me, let me clarify or, or, or stipulate my experience level here and where I'm coming from. So I am an iPhone user. I've been an iPhone user from day one, but I do obviously dabble in Android also. But for me, I like the premium phones because of the camera. The, basically, the camera is why I like the premium phone. So that's why I, I always gravitate in the direction of, of the premium phone for that purpose. And having said that, the video is the big area for me on phones, and the iPhone's better on video. Now, photo-wise, the 6A is excellent. And if you have a 3A now, and James, you are correct. You don't need a license to listen. That's right. This is when the, it's the transmitting <laughs> that you need the license. Um, but back to this uh, question. Um, the, if you're coming from the 3A and you're happy with the 3A, then you'll be very happy with the 6A because it has a lot built in that I think is going to satisfy a lot of folks. The big areas of difference are that the 6A is not as large, so you can see the size difference here between the two phones. 
And for me, that's a plus because I like a smaller phone. Um, the 6A has the Tensor processor, which is very close in performance to the Tensor 2 on the, on the 7 Pro. Um, you get an extra camera now. So before you just had that single camera, now you've got a wide angle and a standard angle camera. Um, so performance is good. Screen is great. It, it's not as nice as, of a screen as the 7 Pro, but it isn't an OLED display like your 3A has. And it looks great, um, especially for the smaller size does not support wireless charging. And for some people, that's a big, a big feature that they'd like to have. And correct me, somebody in the chat, if I'm wrong, but I, I don't know if the 6A supports ultra-wideband 5G. Let me look and see if that's the case. Oh, it does. On Verizon, the 6A supports ultra-wideband. So there's not as much. It's funny. There used to be a bigger gap, but there's less of one, especially on the performance side. It performs exceptionally well, to the point where you're not going to notice much of a difference. Now, this has, I think, the, the 60 hertz display. This one's 120 hertz, so this will feel a little smoother. But if you, if, you if you like your three and you move up to this, it's not going to be that bad. And just to reiterate, um, if you, do not, you do not need a license to own this. You can listen all you want without a license, but if you want to if you, want to get, if you want to get something like this, you're going to need a license for that. <laughs> and actually, you can, listen on the, on the, you can listen on any radio, as long as you don't push the transmit button. Um, what do I think of the fact that the most of the Pixel's call of system features are region restricted? So do you know which regions they're restricted to? I'm in the US, so generally everything works around here. But um, Amazon customer Cheryl B. and Jason, thank you for the follows on Amazon. So as far as I, I know for a fact, the 6A does not do video output. Um, this one, I don't think so, but let me double check on that. I'll put HDMI. Uh, 7 Pro. Let's take a look. I don't think it does because I may have... It does not look like that's the case. So this will not do video output through the USB. Samsung phones do, but these don't. Which is surprising, because I, I think that's a feature that people would like to have. And the iPhones do it, and the Samsung phones do it. Heffen says they don't have the Pixel Assist. I bet you there's probably some regulatory issue there, too. From what I gather, that AI is pretty creepy, <laughs> that people think it's a, um, a person, or it sounds a lot like a person. I'm just waiting for this to finish updating. And Poorly Buffalo says, no FR on the 6A either. What is FR? Yeah, the, the screen on the 7 is certainly nicer, the 7 Pro. And the 7 Pro screen is nicer than the, than the regular 7 is. But I'll be honest with you, like if, if you're... If you don't need the flagship phone, you're going to feel like when you get this 6A that it feels like the flagship phone because it's, it's really nice for, for the price point. It's, it's by far, so Google's been making these A-series phones for a while now. And they, they always felt like, you know, the, the last year's model rebadged kind of thing. Um, and it sort of still is, but it... It just feels like a much better value than, this, than the A-level phones were in the past. And I've been a big fan of the A-level phones for many years. But this one, um, this one, I think, if you were to like rank them, the, three, the Pixel 3a was largely considered one of the best budget or mid-range phones out there ever. This one is better than the 3a. And the 4a was good. You know what I mean? Like They're always good, but this is a really good, I mean, really good phone. Partly because it, it has 
Google's own chip on board, which makes a big difference. And this Genshin Impact, it downloads an 18 gigabyte <laughs> file on the flagship phone. It is still processing. It's crazy how long that takes. So if you have questions um, anywhere, ask away. You got me for another few minutes here. AC, thank you for the follow. Um, so wait for that to finish doing its thing. But yeah, I've been, again, very happy with the uh, 6A. It doesn't have the wireless charging. That's, I think, the, for me, that would be the biggest reason to look at the Pro versus the other one. Oh, facial recognition. You are correct. So this, both, both phones have a fingerprint reader built into them. So if you hit the fingerprint, most of the time it lets you in, although I've been hearing from some folks who've had issues with it. So we'll do a couple more here. Now, if I put my, my thumb down incorrectly, it'll... Yes, it doesn't read it that time. There it goes. But this one will do a face recognition and a fingerprint. So, speakerphone, that's a good question. Let me try, uh, you know what I'll do? To simulate a speakerphone, why don't we do a quick recording and see how it sounds, because that'll be kind of the similar, the similar thing, right? So I'll load up the recorder app. Let's go back to recorder. All right, so now I'm simulating a speakerphone call where I am pretending that I am on the phone with somebody and let's hear how it sounds when I am done speaking. All right, so now I'm simulating a speakerphone call where I am pretending that I am on the phone with somebody. And let's hear how it sounds when I am done speaking. Actually sounds pretty clear. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with, uh, with how that sounds. Not bad at all. And then, of course, you get the, uh, the live transcription, which I think is pretty cool. And that doesn't require that you... Um, have to, like, there's no data transfer with that either, so it just kind of does it in the cloud there. Um, so Ravaging Wolverine, I have an old phone. It would take me more than one phone to download. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you think about it, it's like, it, this phone's been installing this game for the last hour. Your battery's gone before it's even... Uh, Yeah, I think, they, I, I, I think everything on the 6A is improved. You know, what I would do is if you're concerned about it, you know, Amazon's pretty good about returns and stuff, so I think I would, I would kind of point you in that direction. But I haven't done a lot of speakerphone conversations on it. So Knopwork says, I would love to get to 6A, but the gigantic buttons in pixel quick settings is a big deal breaker for me. You're talking about, oh yeah, they are pretty big, aren't they? And you got to pull, pull down again to get the rest of it. I don't know if you can customize that or not. Can you? I'm not sure about that. Is the yeah? So the whole thing is moving. So you'll see it. Um, you can see like the the lit up areas. And it's so basically, it's giving you a live view of of weather satellites and where the sun is and it's moving in real time. So I am not, although on the prior phone, which was the 5A and the Pixel, uh, the, this is two phones ago. So the Pixel 5 and, was it the 4A too? I can't remember now. The Pixel 5 I know in particular had an issue that if you were recording 4K video, it would it would shut down after five minutes because it was getting too hot. I, I tested that same video thing on this phone, did not have that problem. So at least the 6A doesn't overheat as much. But I have not tested the 7 in the same way, although I haven't heard people complaining about that. And of note was that I had asked uh, Google on the prior phone, like, or the, the 5 series phone, like, um, is this, is this like expected, expected use case? And they never, they never responded to me. So that usually to me says, it looks like they know about it. 
But yeah, this is a live uh, wallpaper, so you'll see it moving as it's, uh, as it's going. All right, 55% on loading data. And I've got to run in about 15 minutes, everybody. This has been fun. We're having a good, good time today. And the Amazon stream is hopping. So let me see what else is on. Yeah, it's funny because usually they have like a bunch of new features that they roll out with these phones. And on this one, not so much. This is on the 7 Pro I'm talking about. It does have a macro. I haven't tested this yet either. It has a macro focus on the ultra wide lens up to three centimeters away. We should try that in a second, see how we can do on that. I just don't want to leave this because we'll have to start over again. <laughs> so the magic eraser we looked at, um, actually I wonder if the 6A has that macro feature too, because it has the same, let's see. Yeah, so this one doesn't seem to have the macro feature, but this one with the new lens does. So we'll try that out, try that out in a second. So they also talk about the magic eraser. Um, they are making a very big effort to get skin tones right on the camera, which has been a big, I'm actually glad they're working on this because they have been really focused, and this is within their software um, photography. They've been very focused on getting skin tones correct. And so that's been a big focus of theirs. Um, and that's part of the AI stuff. And Grayson, if you're still with us, another new feature on this phone is something called um, Guided Frame. And it helps the visual, uh, visually impaired take selfies using audio and haptics to make sure they're centered. So that's a new feature. It also does 10-bit HDR video on the 7. Playback, though, is always difficult with that. And you've got your tensor security stuff, face unlock, security hub. Yeah, not, there's not a lot new as far as features go. All right, we're going to let this finish up here. James says, it can't be the earth. I don't see the ice walls. <laughs> That's right. It's not flat, right? All right, we're almost there on Genshin Impact, and then we can see how that goes. So again, we got the 6A and the 7 Pro here. It's a nice phone. And that's our wireless charger at work, too. And while we're waiting, why don't we see if the watch here has an update or been updated? No, it's still down. Oh, it's almost done. Look, it's, it's getting closer. My guess is that it's pushing the update through the phone and it's downloading over Bluetooth, which takes forever. And the Apple Watch had the same problem for many years until they did something. So Ed H says, I like the large size because I could use the phone for a teleprompter. Can you get a Bluetooth game? Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. It'll pair up with uh, any Xbox, PlayStation, 8-bit Doe, all those controllers work with it. All right, we're almost there. So this is a first. I actually have more people watching on Amazon right now than on YouTube. All right, we're almost there. And then after we load the game up <laughs> and run around for a second, um, we'll take a look at the macro feature. And then I'm going to probably have to run because my kids will be home. Dinner will need to be eaten, and then children need to go to bed because it's a school night. It's Sunday already. What do I have going on tomorrow? Let's see. 
Oh good, I got a whole clear day. I got two, three clear days. And my daughter has her big concert at school coming up. So that's exciting. Yeah, I love starting the week off. I got, I'm starting off with one of my videos done already, which is great. Jeffrey Cherry, thank you for the follow. Yeah, we do these kinds of things all the time. We just go on. What I do is I, I, um, when I get things in for review, I just go live and we, we tinker with stuff until they're working. So we're about two and a half hours into the stream here. And then once this is done, we'll see how the game runs, and then we'll try the macro feature out. And if you're on Amazon and you have a question, uh, ask away. I'm here to answer questions. You can interact with me. That's the whole deal. Okay. Tap to begin. I'm going to flip it over this way because it's more comfortable. And it's loading again. <laughs> See, just because you have the flagship phone doesn't make the games load any faster, right? And for ports, by the way, you just have your uh, USB-C port here at the bottom. So you can charge through that or charge with a wireless charger like we got here. Do, 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 do. We'll just wait another minute or two. All right, here we go. Now, what am I supposed to be looking for on, on uh, stats here? Is there a stats thing that I can pull up? So I've got the network settings there. I mean, for a free game, it, it feels pretty AAA to me, right? But it's, you have, you have, I guess you could play without having to buy anything. Is that correct? But that's not how they make their money. They make their money by buying stuff. All right, let's see here. Teleport waypoint. I'm climbing the wall here. Yeah, I mean, it seems like it runs pretty well on here. But it's, you know, honestly, you know, from, I'm not going to spend the three hours to download it onto this phone, but it, it runs very similar on the other phone. I'm just trying to see if there's graphics settings somewhere. Oh, John, I missed this question earlier. I have not. I did see one at CES or one of those shows a while ago, but I never got it in for review. But I would like to take a look at one. The one that I, that I saw was the one that's been advertised on social media quite a bit. And that one can detect, well, it supposedly can detect the difference between a wire and a pipe and all that kind of stuff. Amazon customer and Josephine Ioza, thank you for the follow. Follows help out quite a bit. And James is watching on Amazon but using the pop-out chat on YouTube. Yeah, make the best of both worlds there. Have at it. Yeah, so games run pretty good on it. So let's take a look at the, after all that. Um, and then if somebody has something they want me to try specifically on that game, I'm happy to do it. So now I'm going to go in on the macro here. And supposedly it can focus in, oh yeah, look at that. Here, let me show you. So this is the macro. Yeah, it gets in pretty tight. Let's find something more interesting to look at. Let's try something with a little more texture, maybe. Let's pick up the... Uh, I'll do this, way, this side.
Yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely able to see things closer than the 6A can. So the macro functionality is definitely better here. That's too close. So it's got it's like three centimeters, they said. So it can get in pretty tight. And you can also see how you can lock the image onto things. So if I click on the focus on that Google G, see how it stays with it? So it's pretty cool. <laughs> the fine print on your phone contract, yeah. The fine print on every contract these days. Um, you play for a while and ask you for banking details, home address, and social security number. No thanks, yeah. Yeah, so like Fortnite, I'd never paid for anything on Fortnite. And, I, and it ran its course with me, so I stopped, you know, I, I got to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm good on, on Fortnite now. So I'll give me another view of this one here. Let's see. Yeah, so, yeah, macro's not bad on it. This is about the sweet spot. So it's about, let me show you the, over, the other view here. That's about as high as it is off of it. And this is the 7 Pro, so this one will do that better. So here's a good question. When you're looking at small text, can it read it to you? Let's, let's see. Yeah, this will be a good one. I don't think it can do that. So I know on the Apple phone, maybe you have to take a picture of it first. Let me see. I'm sure there's an app that does do that kind of thing. Um, it doesn't do it in the camera app. On the, um, what it did do though is it read the barcode. So the QR code down here and it's, read, it's, it's reading the QR code. And I, th I bet you it's going to read these barcodes too. Yeah, it's picking up all these barcodes as I, as I run the camera over it. So it's got the, the web address for Google with a QR code, but it's also reading these codes as I move the phone over it. That's pretty cool. Google Lens might do that. Let's try that. I got some more followers to thank. Wow, lots of new followers on Amazon. I've got uh, Josefina Ioza, Jesse Garcia, Tim Timogen, and Angela Marie Williams. And if you have questions, I am here to answer before I have to go. So feel free to ask away. Um, let's see here. So Google Lens might do the reading. Let's see. Do I have Lens on here? Well, that's part of the Google app now, isn't it? So if I go to the Google app and hit this. All right, let's see if it'll read me the fine print on the box. That's a lot of fine print. Let's see. Google Lens, so we'll hit that. Open camera. So this is going to search. I don't know if it's, oh, can it read it? Let's see, text. So it'll copy that. Does it, can it read it for me? Oh, listen, here we go. Oh. oh if I select all of it and then go to listen. And now it's reading it in French. <laughs> it detected it as French, so it's reading it in French. Let's see if it goes to English now. Designed by Google. Google Pixel Watch made in Vietnam. Bond and chargé made in China. Conçu par Google. La Google Pixel Watch. Yeah, it must be, it's picking up French, so it's, it's reading the English with a French accent, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, that's cool. Yeah, so it does, does some of that. We saw the live translation. That was pretty cool. So again, um, from a size perspective, this is your 6A on the left and your 7 Pro here on the right. Kind of following a similar design language. But I think, you know, for a lot of folks, the 6A is an excellent phone because they, they built in their kind of their flagship processor. It's not going to rival the iPhone on performance, 
Um, but I think for people that like Android phones and maybe are you know, dealing with one that's getting a little long in the tooth, um, you're going to be really happy, especially with the camera performance on this. It's a really good little, little phone, for sure. Got some more people to thank. Connor D. Augustine, Amazon customer, and Andrew A. all followed me. Yeah, so um, I'm going to be signing off in a few minutes. But if you are not already following me on Amazon, please do, because we, I pop on usually about one, two or three times a week, depends on the week. Um, but we come on, and I get stuff in. I take it out of the box and review it and all that kind of stuff. So it's a, it's a fun, oh, yeah, right, right next to the yeah, lens is right there. OK. And actually, I can identify some flat. So if I hit this, watch this, it'll identify the flower as an IV geranium. If you've never used this, if you have something growing in your garden, you're like, what is that? You point Google Lens at it, and generally, it can, it can identify it. Here's another one. So if I point it at this uh, sunflower here, it should, yep, common sunflower. Isn't that cool? Let's see if it can pick up this product. Yep. Just from visual identification. Let's see what it does with my dog. Yep, Siberian Husky, although it, it initially said miniature Siberian, which is not what she is. She's a regular Siberian. So that was a little bit off, but it didn't know the size in context. See, we'll see what it can do with Dunkin' Donuts. Didn't get that one. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll force it to look at the cup. Oh, I got that one. Yeah, a bunch of other Dunkin' images. And then let's see if it would see what it does with me. Hey, look at that. It's got a bunch of nicer looking people than me, and it pulls up. So this is what's good about me is that I'm not well known. <laughs> I can still go to the grocery store and not be recognized. Yeah, it's got a bunch of white t-shirts and stuff, but that's it. It doesn't recognize me, which is good. It's good to have not have your face be recognized. All right. Well, everybody, I got a jet before everybody gets home, and I may start trying to clean up this mess down here, but I thank you all for tuning in. An epic Amazon live stream tonight, so that was great. And uh, yeah, so this was like my most watched uh, stream of the Black Friday weekend, and it's still going. I've got 166 watching right now. So there's the two phones. This is the 6A. This is the uh, 7 Pro. My wife is calling, so I got a jet. But thank you all for tuning in, and I will be back before you know it. Follow me on Amazon if you're not already, or follow me on YouTube, and we will be back again before you know it. Bye-bye.